It's that time again. It's time for another Saturday night special where we talk about everything rock hounding related. Well, this past week, there was a lot of podcasting happening. We announced our own podcast, myself and Sarah. Uh, it's the previously rock hounding podcast. Maybe you guys saw it, heard of it, all of that good stuff. You saw the video that we put up. Well, uh, it seems like uh, it's very well received, and you can go over to the website, currently rockhounding.com slash podcast, and go check it out. We're on all the platforms. It's a lot of fun. I, You know, a big part of this project is doing stuff, uh, me and Sarah, you know. Um, I love our interaction, our two-way interaction here on uh, on YouTube and on the website and all of that, but really it's fun to just kind of do stuff with her for me. <laughs> um and uh, so it's cool that we can, like, you know, grab a magazine, uh, an old magazine from the 70s or 80s, Rock and Gem magazine to be specific. I read it. She reads it. We do our own little independent research on different topics and stuff in it and see, see where it leads us in the conversation. A lot of fun. I think you guys would like it. Well, uh, one of the things that came up there in, uh, in, in the discussion was uh, a uh, thing called Mineral Digest. Now, I had never heard of Mineral Digest, and, uh, well, I was looking on eBay, and I actually bought all of these for $3.95. <laughs> uh, and what we have here is we have a whole bunch of old lapidary journals. Um, these are kind of cool, but that's not really what I wanted to share with you. You know, um, I'm, I'm surprised... Okay, so here's the thing. I'm surprised that I can find these kinds of deals on some of this stuff. Like, I wouldn't sell a stack of books on eBay for $3.95 with, I think I paid two ninety five dollars shipping uh, media mail. It's like, that. I know everybody, has, everybody needs m money, but like, oh no, it doesn't seem worth it. Well, um, in going through our read-through of Rock and Gem magazine, I came across these, and these are quite, quite cool. Um, so these are from the late seventies, and it's uh, just like a journal about rocks and minerals. I mean, it's so well done for the time. Like you know, it's much more akin to like you know being a being a book than it is um, being like a magazine. It's just so well done, so well produced. I would highly uh, recommend, you probably find those at a library, I bet. Um, but they're, they're very cool to see. And we're just really enjoying going through kind of this whole rock hounding thing from the past. You know, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun and we're learning a lot. Also, uh, I did the Rock Hound podcast. All right. So uh, definitely go check them out as well. I'll drop some links down below. It's always fun to go and uh, chat with my uh, my fellow rock hounding community over there. It's 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 a good time, you know. Um, well, uh, I've been doing some cutting. I've been doing some cutting of some of the calcite continuation. We showed some of this last week, right? So this is all calcite from Utah, and did some cuts. I think a lot of it came out pretty nice. Let's uh, let's look at some of this. Look at that. That's a nice piece. This one's kind of more uh, well, like I, I would say it's more of a subtle subtle banding in it. That looks really good. I did have a couple of pieces uh, that I cut that I was like, yeah. Maybe they're not the best. <laughs> that one's got some almost like dog tooth calcite on the inside, which is pretty cool to see. And then I think this one's probably my this one's probably my favorite here. This one looks in particularly good. I think that's pretty awesome. That's a very very unique piece of calcite, and uh, these will be keepers for sure, for sure. You know. Um, while I was uh, doing that cutting, I did some cutting of some thunder eggs. I guess I can just use some water off my bench here. <laughs> so 
So, uh, you know, one thing that seems like it happens is what if you tell people that you really like something, things kind of just make their way to you, you know. And, well, I have a bin of Thunder Eggs, and I don't know the bed that they came from. So, uh, I believe uh, this is a McDermott Thunder Egg. Kind of a pretty one. I like it. But yeah, uh, I don't really know where where any of these uh, came from. I mean, I didn't collect them myself. That one's a little, little more. Um, I don't know. Not well, well filled. I mean, uh, these little rhyolite balls uh, have that little gas pocket in it. And what I find interesting was I actually cut one. <laughs> and this is probably a more interesting dud. So uh, we just had no no silicates moved in, you know, um, just uh, empty, <laughs> which is kind of cool in its own way to see uh, a well-formed thunder egg that's just empty, empty on the inside. And now this one that I cut is obviously from a different bed. Now this really looks like the material from Rabbit Springs, Idaho. And I mean, very distinctive, very different. Um, still very cool though. I mean, I, I, there's something about a, a thunder egg where you could cut it and it's just kind of eh, not great. Like that kind of gamble aspect to it. I, I, it appeals to me, I guess, you know, what can I, what can I say? Um, it is starting to warm up here and I do want to get out and do some more rock hunting trips. It feels so good. We've started to go and do some of these, uh, hit some spots and some videos are going to be coming in the coming weeks. Be able to get out and uh, do some exploring. We've been doing a lot. I've been doing a lot of summer planning, which uh, now is the time to get all of the, your uh, your ducks in order. And uh, ducks in order. Where did that even come from? Ducks in a row? I don't know. Who has ducks and who lines them up? But, uh, you know, taking care of the vehicles, doing the trip planning, figuring out all the places we want to go, kind of making a schedule. And uh, yeah, the summer is filling up quick. It's filling up quick, but it's it's a lot of fun just to be able to uh, and, and look down at the calendar and be like, here's the list, it's getting bigger and bigger. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm pumped for, for the coming summer. So I know, uh, some of you have already seen this. So I love this slab, right? Now, if you go back in time to the Spokane Rock Rollers tailgate show, tailgate show, tailgate swap event, uh, I bought this slab of what I believe it's like an Oahe Jasper uh, for a buck. Or maybe it was two bucks. I want to say it was a buck. I'd have to go back and watch. Um, but very cool. Um, I like this portion right here. I have an idea. Uh, I asked on the community tab here on the channel what side was better, and unanimously everybody was like, oh, that, because, you know, you have like a sun appearance uh, rising over the hills. And, well, I have an idea. I want to use this for a future project, and it's going to be, I think, double-sided. I want to do a double-sided project where you can uh, flip it. I mean, in this orientation, like these down here, not so great. Not so great. So I'm really kind of treating this like this is the portion that I would be using for this project. And I think it'll be be pretty cool. I mean, it's beautiful, beautiful stuff, you know. And I, I actually have I have some Jasper uh, that needs cutting. But if my project goes well, I'll be doing more of, more of this. My uh, buddy Patrick. Patrick, he um, sent some material. Uh, and I did a little bit of identification help with it. And I think uh, it looks pretty good under the microscope. Kind of see some of this here. So Patrick is down there in California. And he was wondering what this material is. And uh, I put it under the microscope. And uh, a combination of what I was able to observe under the microscope and the location, well, it's definitely a uh, kyanite crystal, very, very little kyanite crystals. Very pretty uh, under the microscope, very fun to 
to look at. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it goes to show the importance of location. I mean, with this whole uh, identification thing, location is location is everything, you know? I mean, some stuff just won't be, stuff isn't everywhere. What can I, you know, that, I think that's maybe the best way to put it. Stuff is not everywhere. And thunder eggs, they occur in a very specific area, um, very specific geologic conditions. Similarly with the jasper, calcite. I mean, this calcite, right? So this stuff that came out of uh, Utah that we picked up uh, summer 2021 uh, outside of, oh man, I'm going to butcher it. Nephi? Nephi? Ne I, I don't know. <laughs> you don't watch this channel for, for my uh, perfect pronunciation of, of things, hopefully, uh, because uh, I come up short on that for sure. Um, but it was part of an underwater aquifer system at one point, I believe. And uh, that's why we have all these uh, different formations in here. So, I mean, imagine uh, how that would build up over time. Um, and that's why, it, that's why it looks like that. So, very cool to see the different ge geological events represented in the rocks that we collect. Well, um... I think that about leaves leaves it here, everybody. I mean, uh, you know, I've uh, just been really, really busy, kind of hammering down, cleaning up the shop, getting everything ready for summer adventures. What do you have going on? Do you have any fun adventures planned? I hope so. Maybe drop them down below. I would love to hear uh, if you have any top spots you want to hit up this spring, this summer. Definitely, please go check out the podcast, both of them, my podcast, the Rockhound podcast, Links down below. Um, it's always good to support community projects. You know, a lot of effort goes into these types of things. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it here. You guys know, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.